What is going on guys welcome back to the go programming tutorial series in today's video we're going to learn about arrays and other collections in go so let us get right into it all right so let's talk about collections in go and we're going to talk about three different types of collections we're going to talk about the ordinary arrays we're going to talk about slices which are a little bit like lists in python or you could also say like array lists or linked lists in java um, and we're going to talk about maps which are like dictionaries in python or you could say hash maps in java now arrays are something that we don't have in python because an array is not only limited by its data type it's also limited by its size so you cannot resize arrays so in go we define arrays like that we say var and then we say array one of size five integer this is now an array an integer array with size five this means that this array is not going to later on have 10 elements or two elements it's always going to have five elements and those are all going to be of the type integer in python when we have a list we can have a list that is one two true hello uh 7.554 uh, and so on so we mix the data types and if we want to later on we can just append new elements and we can say okay now add a nine here and add a false here and so on so very dynamic, but it comes at a cost, which is performance, as so often. Uh, in Go, we can just go ahead and define arrays like that. If we go ahead and say FMT print line, and we're going to print the array, you're going to see that the default value is zero for all the individual places here. Um, and we can, of course, change them. So we can go ahead, of course, and... Uh, say array at index one is going to be 20, which is the second position. Remember, this is zero, one, two, three, four. This is just how an array counts. So index one is actually referring to this position here, second position. Uh, and we can go ahead and change this to, so the last element to 10, for example. And you can see that that works, but we cannot all of a sudden go ahead and change, for example, the index six, because the index six does not exist. We can also not change the index five. So if I try to say index five is going to be 22, for example, it's going to say invalid array index five out of bounds for the five element array because we cannot go out of bounds. This is something that is different in Go than in C, for example. In C, we can just go ahead and cause a buffer overflow. So this is, of course, dangerous. Go is very safe. It doesn't allow us to do that. So we cannot do that. Of course, this is also the thing that we use to print the individual values. So if I want to print, for example, the uh, value on index one, of course, now it's zero because I, I deleted that. But if I change array one, one to 20, and then I print it, I'm going to get this value only. So it's a very basic array, uh, similar also. So those things are very similar to that in Python or to how we deal with lists in Python. Um, but of course, array are way faster, arrays are way faster for uh, a lot of different operations. So for example, even though they're not dynamic in size or precisely because they're not dynamic in their size, um, accessing the individual values can happen in constant time. If you remember my algorithm tutorial series, uh, accessing values in arrays is happening in constant time because we know where it is. We can calculate the position and access it. Whereas in linked lists, we have to traverse through the individual elements and we have linear runtime complexity. So that is not good. Now we can, by the way, we can also change this here to be array one and then have the size here. So it doesn't matter if you put this to the data type or to the actual name. Um, we can also directly initialize them. So we can say uh, array one, then this operator here is going to be an integer array of size five. And we can actually also already specify the values here. So we can say one, two, three, four, five, for example, and then we're going to say fmt.println of array one. And you're going to see that works, but it only, it doesn't only work like that. We can also remove the last three digits, for example, or numbers. And you're going to see that it's going to be one, two, and then filled up with a default value, which is zero, as you can see here. So this is how you can directly initialize arrays. Um, if you want to know how long an array is, you can just go ahead and 
call the length function like that. This is the same way that it's done in Python. So you can see the syntax is actually quite similar. Or actually the same, at least this part here, you can see we have a length five. So it doesn't refer to the amount of set elements, it refers to the size of the array, by the way, if we choose strings here instead of integers, so if I um, let me do it like that, array one is going to be or actually what was it bar array one is going to be size five string array. If I then print this, we're going to see that the default value is an empty string. I'm not sure what happens for booleans, to be honest. Uh, was it bool or was it boolean? I think bool was the keyword. Oh, we're, we're talking about the length here, by the way. So we need to get rid of that. But I think the default value should be false. As you can see, it is. Let me just show you once again the string because I didn't recognize that or realize that it didn't show the results. There you go. So this is how you define basic arrays. We can also define two dimensional arrays. So we can say var uh, array 2d like that is going to be four, five, and then uh, integer, for example, and we can fill the array up with some values, we can say four, I equals zero, I being less than four, I plus plus, four J equals zero, J being less than five, J plus plus, we can say, array 2d, add those positions is going to be I times J, for example. And then we can just go ahead and print it out by saying array 2d. Let's go ahead and see the results. So this is how you define multi dimensional arrays. As you can see, it's now filled up with the respective values. And I think that's uh, the basic stuff that you need to know about arrays in Go. So let's go ahead and talk about slices and slices are a little bit more similar to lists in Python but we still cannot mix up the data types. So a slice has to be a slice of strings or a slice of integers and so on. Uh, it's more comparable to an array list in Java. So it's dynamic in its size, but it has to be the same data type. And in order to define one in Go, we need to say something like S1 equals, and then we need to call the make function. So in Go, we need to call the make function in order to make a slice. And we're going to say it's going to be a string slice, for example, off size five in this case. So if we do that, you're going to see that the result is not going to be uh, too different from a basic string array, or actually, it's going to be the same, I think, as you can see here. Uh, but the difference is now that with slices, we can do a lot more different things. So first of all, we can, of course, extend their size. So we can append elements to a slice, but we can also do different things like uh, copying them. And we can also uh, use slicing operators that we know from Python. Um, but I'm going to first create a second slice here, which is going to be an integer slice. I'm going to print that as well. And then you're going to see that here we also have zeros. So Right now, we cannot really see the difference between a slice and an array. So let's do something that we cannot do with an array. By the way, before we do that, let me just show you also that the way of addressing uh, the individual positions is the same. I'm not going to show you that, but I'm just going to mention that here. So if you do something like s1 at index two is something it's going to work the same way that it works with an array. Um, but what we cannot do with an array is appending elements. So right now the slice has the size one, let's just work with the integer slice here. So let's just call this s, get rid of that. And here we're going to just print s. Now we have five zeros, if I go ahead now and say s equals append to s the element 60, for example, we're not going to change one of those five elements to 60, we're going to keep those five zeros, and we're going to add a 60 in the end. So we're going to actually increase the size. And we can see that this happens by printing out the length. So we can say fmt dot print line length of a slice. And we can do it afterwards. 
So you can see that the size actually changes or the length actually changes from five to six. So this is something that we cannot do with arrays. By the way, we can not only add one element, we can also say 70, 80, 10, 22, 33, and so on. We can add multiple elements, we can pass as many elements as we want, and we're going to add them to the slice, and then they're going to be in the slice. And this works with all data types, of course, not in an integer slice, we cannot add strings here. You can see if I try to do this, go is going to stop me, it's not even going to compile. Uh, but as you can see, the integer values all work fine. So um, what we can also do here is we can do copies. As I mentioned, we can do copies of slices. This is not something that we can do um, with arrays. So we can go ahead and say copy one or CP one is going to be an integer slice with the length of S. Maybe we should have kept that. So let's do it again. S equals append to as some values like that. There you go. And now we're going to make that copy and then we're going to say copy into CP1 the slice S. As you can see here. And if I now print not S but copy we can see that the values are actually the same. But we can also see that it's not going to be just a reference. So if I press, uh, if I also print s, and if I change something before that in CP one, so if I say CP one two is 20, we're going to see that this is not actually going to change anything in the original, because we're actually copying the original. So we're not actually changing, uh, we're not just referencing it, we're not just pointing to it, we're actually copying the original, uh, which is quite important sometimes. And the last thing that I want to show you is the slicing operator, which we probably know already from Python, or which you probably already know from Python. And this is if I say fmt dot print line, and I want to print uh, a range of values. So let's say I want to print from the copy, uh, the first five elements or from from this from the second element up until the third element, I can do one colon four. And this basically means print one, two, three, but not four. So we're printing, printing this index as well. We're printing two, three, but we're not printing that index. This is important. So if I do that, you can see that we get zero, 20, zero. So we're getting index one, index two, index three, but not index index four. Um, I think if this is a Pythonic syntax, this should also work. So if you don't specify a number, this should be zero. And uh, yeah, that's true. And if it's also exactly like in Python, we should be able to also access negative indices, but we cannot do that. So this is not something that's supported in Go. In Python, this would work. So in Go, you have to slice um, with positive numbers. But that is what a slice can do in Go. So last but not least, we're going to talk about maps, which are similar to dictionaries in Python, or hash maps in Java. And for this, we need to say, m1 equals make again. So we're going to use the make function again. But this time we pass the keyword map. And then inside of square brackets, we need to specify the key data type. So what we're going to use to access the individual values. And in this case, it's going to be a string. And then after the square brackets, we need to specify the value data type, which is going to be int in our case. So we're going to use strings that are going to reference integers. And in order to actually set such a pair, so the key value pair, uh, in order to create one, we just have to say m1. And then in square brackets, we need to pass a string, for example, key one. And this string is going to refer to the value 20 in this case, then I can also say m1 key two is going to reference 30. And then I can do some other key is going to be referencing 60. So this is now those are now three key value pairs. And if I go ahead and say FMT print line m1, you're going to see that we have something that looks a little bit like a JSON object, or in this case, not really, it looks like just a list with key value pairs. So we have key one referencing 20, key two referencing 30, and some other key referencing 60. Now in order to just print one specific thing, we can just go ahead and say, 
print key one, and then we're just going to get 20 as a result. So we don't have ind indices here, we just have, um, we just have key value pairs. So what is important here is that when we try to access a key from a dictionary, we don't get just one value, we can also get two values. So let's say again, I try to access something that does not even exist. So let's say I try to access m1. And then I try to access non existent key, for example, we're not going to get an error message here, because this is not how go works. We're also not going to get an error during runtime, we're just going to get the value zero, because that is uh, the basic value for an integer that does not exist, or it was not set. So the problem here is that we can actually have zero as a value in the in the map. So if you want to know if that value was existent or not, if it was present or not, we can return two values. So first of all, we can get the value. And second of all, we can get the presence, you can say, or let's call it present. So value and present. And then we can say this is just m one uh, non existent key like that. Uh, by the way, we cannot use single quotations. So we need to use double quotations like that. And then we can go ahead and say FMT print line, and we can print the value. But then we can also print if it would if it was actually present or not, like that. If we do that, we're going to still get the value zero, but we're going to see that it was not present in the first place. So the whole value did not exist. Uh, whereas if I now create this, and I say, okay, this non existent key is actually an existent key, then I can set this to zero as well. So it still can have the value zero, zero is not a wrong value, I can have that value. Uh, but we're going to see that this is actually part of the key value pair. So this is not just an error, this is actually um, a legit key value pair in the map. So this is what you can do as well. We can then also go ahead and uh, delete the uh, or delete a key. So we can go ahead and say delete from the map key two, And then we can just print the map again. And you're going to see that the key value pair, which has key two as a key is not going to be there anymore. There you go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.